Isn't it beautiful out there? Good morning, everybody. It's, um, it's February, and I'm just now starting to film for YouTube again, including, well, this video is for YouTube, obviously. But I was doing some time-lapse stuff. I wanted to talk today about just kind of the tools you need to start photography, landscape photography, or portrait photography, just photography in general. I kind of wanted to talk about that today. I'm gonna do a little time lapse of this fog, and then we're gonna move to another spot and continue this conversation. So I need to get this, that way we can get it and uh, not run out of time, because obviously when you're shooting stuff like this, it's a very short time before the sun comes up, and then everything's kind of just gone, overexposed, blown out. So gonna go do that. We'll move to a different spot and then we'll continue this conversation, all right? Okay, we're in spot number two, taking pictures of this river right now. We're in the Russia, we're in Monterio, and this is the uh, public beach, but it's the river, the Russian river. This kind of just starts going out into the ocean. You can hear ducks. It's very beautiful. I'm the only one out here right now. So I'm trying to take these photos, but... So there's a couple tools you need when you're wanting to start photography in general. Um, obviously the most crucial one is a camera. Um, any camera, DSLR, mirrorless, doesn't matter if it's a 12 megapixel camera, if you're just starting out, especially if it's something that's in your budget. Definitely stick to your budget. Don't try to overspend. That will eventually come if you start doing the, you know, if you start doing a little bit of wed weddings, get some of that stuff under your belt, make profit off of it. Then you can just start saving and buying, you know, the more expensive stuff. Um, there is a lot of affordable cameras out there now, and there's a lot of affordable accessories that you can use and need for starting this. Hey, little duck. Hey, little duck. Perfect. Oops. Now, the other thing that you need is a tripod. A good tripod will be your best friend. I know there's a lot of photographers photographers out there that don't like using tripods they're all handheld and stuff like that but when you're doing landscape stuff and you're getting something like that that's constantly moving and your hands are shaking and whatnot you're gonna want just a really not a super expensive tripod because they can get pretty expensive but just a tripod that's gonna make your shots stable sharp and um, help you whether you're doing astrophotography which is something we'll talk about later um, whether you're shooting animals like this duck right here i mean he's he's obviously modeling right now look at him bye duck thank you appreciate you bye <laughs> But yeah, a tripod. This is the Terion tripod. Uh, I got this a few years ago. We, we, uh, me and this company collaborated. There's an old video that I did it, that I did a collaboration on. But I still use this tripod today. I mean, I took this thing with me backpacking to Washington on a week-long backpacking trip. It was light. Um, the body's made out of aluminum. I'll put the link in the description below. It's got a great tripod head. Uh, the knobs have not failed on me. They don't stick. Uh, I put this thing, the legs, in salt water, and obviously you got to clean them. Um, but the only thing that I think that's my fault that I lost are the little, the little legs. There's these little nubs that go down there. I lost those, sticking it in sand and stuff like that. But a good tripod is always great to have. Um, and one thing I came into realization uh, shooting with a buddy of mine is you also need like a really good heavy duty tripod. This is my lightweight travel tripod. I do have another tripod at home that's a lot heavier, stout. It's um, 
it's just real heavy and sturdy. So when I go to areas that are windy, uh, my camera body's not shaking. Uh, my buddy had trouble with the lighter tripod and the wind was just blowing his and he just had shaky shots the whole time. Now I'm shooting underneath the bridge. We've got this beautiful, beautiful fog rolling in over there. And uh, I'm capturing that now. So another thing that you need is obviously just a good backpack. They make so many, it's kind of hard to tell like which kind to get. This is another, this is still Tarion. Like I said, I've, I did shoots, I did the collab, collab ugh, I did the collaboration with these people. Um, this company, sorry, this company and this backpack, I've had it forever too. And it's, it's been great. It hasn't ripped. I had one backpack that I bought off of Amazon and, uh, <laughs> crows, um, that I bought off of Amazon. It was like cheap. It was like $50 years ago. And I was out shooting in early in the morning and I went to put my camera and it had a front pocket like this but it was in the front and I put my camera body in there, my 24 to 70 L series lens. And when I went to swing it over my shoulder, my camera with lens and all went flying and my 24 to 70 broke, like it was just done. And that lens has some super sentimental value in it because it was my cousin's and he sold it to me. Um, actually my cousin was the person why I got into photography and that's why he sold it to me because we I've been doing it for so long he's been seeing all my work so he sold it to me so I still have it it's still broken um, they don't make parts for it to repair it anymore so um, it's not like I'm gonna throw it away but get yourself a good backpack I think for that spend the money on that um, they make all kinds this one was affordable as well it was around maybe a hundred dollars somewhere around there and uh, it, none, none of the zippers none of the clips it's just now starting to tear like in the cloth but there's another terry on backpack that's kind of like a backpacking camera backpack i'll be moving into that sometime soon but this one i'll put the link in the description for this backpack as well because it's been good to me it hasn't broken down um, and it holds quite a bit taking a couple more photos underneath this bridge with the fog we're gonna to move to a different location and then we're gonna talk about lenses and what I personally think should be your maybe first three lenses you should purchase. Yeah, first three lenses to purchase. And then after that, once you start making thousands and thousands of dollars in your photography career, landscape, video, YouTube, whatever you wanna do with it, you can buy whatever lens you want, but these are gonna be like the top three most important lenses you should get, in my opinion. I keep forgetting that this Canon 60 is not touchscreen. I'm so used to the camera I'm filming on, the EOS R, that I forget that this thing's not touchscreen and I keep wanting to touch the screen and I was like, what the hell is it not working? But I gotta use the old buttons. Okay, I think I found a good place to end this video, right on the coast. Man, I don't know, most of my videos are on the coast, but I really love the ocean. And I think that's why I always ultimately end up at the coast, shoot at the coast, or something related to the ocean or water. But check this view out, guys. Look at that. I got fishing over there. It's a good spot right there. So the three lenses I feel any photographer should have in his arsenal is first the 70 to 200. Now I know this lens is expensive and I know that for a fact because I've been using 
the first generation 70 to 200 for at least a solid 10 years already I haven't bought any new ones haven't upgraded to the RF uh, same thing with the lens I'm filming now it's a 16 to 35 uh, 2.8 L series first generation no image stabilization no nothing um, I got them on Craigslist gosh I want to say like how old's my daughter 13 maybe 11 years ago she was young when I got them and I got the 70 to 200 for like 800 bucks at the time and the 70 to 200 or the sorry the 16 to 35 for um, $700 which is a lot and then the last lens that I think everybody should have is obviously the nifty 50 now this lens comes in handy for just getting that nice crispy sharp images you know you get the blurred background bokeh whatever you want to call it but this 50 i when i first started out in photography i had the canon rebel xti which was like 12 megapixels and um like i said my cousin sold me oh, camera almost rolled away uh, my, cas my cousin sold me my first camera and my first uh, L-series lens. Well, my third L-series lens. But uh, it was a Canon Rebel XTI. And uh, it came with the 50. And it was just the little plastic version one of these. Man, and I shot everything with it. Uh, landscape stuff. Um, portraits. I remember doing, trying to do macro stuff of like grass with watery dew on it um, flowers for the longest time and then when I started doing weddings um, you know I eventually had to move up to a, a wider lens but 50 millimeter 70 to 200 and a 16 to 35 is probably the first three lenses you should get um, oh one last thing that you'll need um, which is I believe is highly important is a neutral density filter let me show you what that does so you can see I mean right now everything is super overexposed and if I were to take this filter off let me show you real quick I mean blown out can't even see the ocean anymore and with the ND filter what it does it just makes everything nice and you can rotate it and I'm at 125 f4 at 100 ISO and so these these are lifesavers if you're shooting in broad daylight and um, you don't have one of these it could be very very tough to shoot anything really I have one on the 50 I have one on the 16 to 35 and the 7200 um, you can get um, they're fairly expensive too but there is some cheaper versions um, I'll link where I got these these are Kodak and they work they work great uh, the one that I have on the 16 to 35 that one was a little more expensive but it was from Best Buy um, but these Kodak ones they work great I'll put the link in that in the description for these two because um, they work the only the only thing that I didn't like is that the lens cap doesn't the original lens cap without the filter won't fit with the it's this is much wider than this so just keep that in mind have a have a safe have a safe spot to put these in when you're done using them but that's it guys I'm gonna wrap everything up I'm gonna go home and I uh, hope you guys like this video. Um, if you like it, please like, subscribe. Those things all help. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.